Hey guys, welcome, welcome back to the channel and to another media analysis video. The series where I talk at length about fictional goth slash alt characters in media. Yes, I finally figured out what to call the series. And today's media analysis, we're talking all things creepy and crawly. That's right, we're covering Growing Up Creepy. I'm really excited for this one because I actually watched this show growing up, so it was pretty nostalgic for me to rewatch it. So grab a drink and a snack as we hop into today's media analysis, Growing Up Creepy. To give you a little bit of context before we jump right into talking about the episodes, Growing Up Creepy was a show that ran from 2006 to 2008 on the Discovery Kids channel. It only has one season and is described on Google as being an animated kids horror show. You can actually watch all of the episodes here on YouTube, which I will leave linked down in the description below. One thing I forgot that a lot of kids shows did back in the early 2000s was mini episodes. So while there are 26 episodes in total, it's more like 52 mini 11 minute episodes. And don't panic, I won't be painstakingly be telling you everything about all 52 episodes. I will only be covering episodes I thought touched on Creepy's character development, deep relationship moments, her family dynamic, and whatever else I think encapsulates the story as a whole. There's really no big overarching story, just mostly Creepy and her friends going on wacky adventures with perfectly good bug-related answers to all their problems. Right off the bat, we have Creepy herself saying that she was raised by bugs. But in my case, life is anything but ordinary. You see, I was raised by bugs. Get the picture? And we see in the intro that she got dropped off as a baby and a house full of bugs took her in. Her full name is Creepy Creature and she's a middle school kid rocking a awesome rainbow half updo with pigtails and of course a black dress. I tried to recreate the hair but my hair is a lot longer than hers and not rainbow. I look more like Emily Osmond in Spy Kids than I do Creepy, so. In the first episode, it's Mother's Day, which is really ironic because it just so happens to be the day that I am filming this video. Creepy has to read a poem in front of the class about her mom, but it almost sounds like I'm listening to a nature documentary about animals killing their prey. Weird, right? As its life drains, crunching, 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 eyes glowing with a hunger never satisfied. Mother. It ends up freaking out the entire class and they go running out of the room. I think it's a bit over dramatic, but whatever. <laughs> this causes her to get sent to the principal's office. The principal is an older woman who is no taller than the kids who go here. She's really big into psychoanalyzing Creepy on her strange behavior and trying to understand her family dynamics. She does this multiple times throughout the series and spoiler alert, it doesn't really go anywhere. <laughs> After the principal gives her an ink blot test and Creepy saying they all look like various types of bugs, the principal decides to drive her home so she can meet her parents, who to this woman sounds super strict and kind of neglectful. Creepy worries about taking her to her home because we as the audience knows she just lives with bugs. Her mom is a praying mantis and her dad is a mosquito. She also has two siblings that we see a lot throughout the show called Nat and Polly and they are a Nat and Pillbug respectively. When Creepy and her principal arrive at her home we're met with this gorgeous but abandoned old mansion. No one is seemingly home when they come in because they all hide, but they are always watching. The mom, the two siblings, and a couple of the other bugs make this costume and control it from the inside to pretend to be a human. This is the costume, but hey, it works, so. Also in this episode, we meet Chris Hallis, one of Creepy's friends, and I'm just gonna say, she sucks. I really disliked her by the end of the show, and you will see why. This mini episode, they're at a amusement park, and Creepy gets excited that there's this new freak show called Tarantula Boy, a kid with eight legs, ooh. <laughs> Creepy is immediately interested and they actually have a little date around the amusement park. We later find out that he lives in a trailer on the park premises. He goes inside to change and comes out looking like a totally normal middle school boy. Was anyone surprised? We find out that his real name is Skipper and Tarantula Boy is just a costume. Creepy is very disheartened to find out he's not a real bug kid and goes home. It ends with Skipper being sad and talking to his mom. The actual Tarantula? What? <laughs> Moving right along from that. We meet Budge, another one of Creepy's friends. And I love him. He's great. Ride or die. He's also the only one who knows Creepy's secret. I wonder why Chris Alice doesn't know. Hmm. In the next episode, Chris Alice is making flyers for a spooky party at her house that no one at the school wants to go to, Creepy included. Creepy's parents urge her to go to be a good friend. Two of Creepy's classmates actually decide to go to the party, but get lost when the invitations got messed up in the printer. And of course, they end up at Creepy's house. The parents think Creepy just invited some classmates over and to try to be really good hosts. <laughs> but it ends up freaking the girls out completely, thinking that because they can't see the bugs, the place is haunted. And when they do figure out it's bugs, they freak 
out even more. They end up getting caught up in a giant web by Creepy's Aunt Rose, who is an enormous spider. They're fine by the next episode though, which is a common theme you will see throughout the show. <laughs> we find out Creepy has a fear of clowns, which like, same girl. Episode 7, time to find out why Chris Alice doesn't know Creepy's secret. Budge and Creepy find an endangered beetle on the middle school football field. It's right before a big game, so all the football players are mad. Chris Alice's dad is there to show his support because his daughter's a cheerleader. That's when we find out that her dad can just get rid of the bug because he's an exterminator. Really? Thankfully, because the beetle is endangered, they legally can't disturb it until a special team comes to retrieve it. Everyone is pissed and leaves, but not before Chris Alice tells Creepy and Budge that they have no school spirit. I want to fight her. Can I punch her in the face? Creepy and Budge actually stay at the school overnight to guard the bug, but while they're guarding it, the beetle is completely tearing up the entirety of the football field. The special team arrives in the morning and says they need to move it to a location where it won't be disturbed for a long period of time. Creepy says she knows the perfect place and plants the beetle at Chris Alice's dad's extermination business. <laughs> Oh, she's so funny. Next episode, Creepy goes on a field trip to a museum, but not before being kind of mean to her mom the morning of and forgetting her lunch. We find out her mom has a thousand bug babies and originates from Madagascar. Creepy's mom so kindly takes Creepy's lunch to her field trip. She's literally avoiding oncoming traffic, only for her to get caught by a bug collector who is hosting the museum outing. Creepy and Budge have to save them all, and they find out he collects all types of bugs and makes them live in jars. They run through the entire museum to try to escape the bug collector and end up freeing all the bugs and trapping the guy in his office with all of them swarming around. Get wrecked, bitch. Episode 8. Budge is acting really strange and avoiding Creepy. It causes her to think that she did something wrong and that they're no longer friends for some reason, so she tries to make new friends. She meets the goth kids which consist of Raven, Misery Whispers, and Morpheus. Raven mentions a band they all like called the Hissing Cockroaches. Creepy misunderstands and thinks they're talking about actual Hissing Cockroaches. She makes comments like, I live with them and I just had dinner with them last night. This causes the group to freak out and want to know everything about their favorite band and asking if they could meet them. Creepy brings them over to their house and they're very excited. She takes them to the basement where they are swarmed by thousands of Hissing Cockroaches. <laughs> The goth kids run away as fast as humanly possible, screaming the entire way. Budge comes over right after with a present. Turns out he was only avoiding her to finish their one year friend anniversary present. A bug cuckoo clock. <laughs> it's so cute. The episode ends with us finding out that the hissing cockroaches are actually also the band, The Hissing Cockroach. <laughs> this show is so good, I swear. Short mentions of episodes 11 and 12. Creepy develops a knack for dark and macabre photography. We love to see it. And in 12, Chris Alice drops off her chameleon last minute with Creepy because she has to go out of town for a competition. Creepy doesn't get any chance to say no. And the whole episode is trying to stop the chameleon from eating her two siblings. Chris Alice picks up her chameleon and it pretends to be a cat. I don't really get it either. But exhibit B of Chris Alice being a shitty friend. The next mini episode features a trope I saw a lot growing up in kid shows. The we're moving. But at the end, psych, we're not actually moving. Creepy's parents tell her that they want to move because they've had so many hatchlings and feel like they're outgrowing the space. Unfortunately for Creepy, they live in the biggest house in town, which would require her to move from all of her friends. They go look for other houses, while Chris Ellis's mom, the real estate agent, shows the house to various couples. Creepy comes up with a lot of schemes throughout the episode to get the couples to not want to buy the house, but she is met with her match when a goth couple shows up and falls utterly in love with the place. Thankfully, due to Creepy's resourcefulness, she asks Chris Alice to make over the house in the most pastel rainbow look ever. It looks like a unicorn threw up in here. The couple obviously doesn't want the house anymore, and rips with the contract and leaves. Just in time for Creepy's parents to get back and tell her they didn't find anything they liked, so they're staying. The next episode continues on the family dynamic train. Creepy is having a hard time dealing with all of her siblings and is wishing she was an only child and that she was just alone. In the beginning of the episode, some of her siblings need her homework, causing her to get in trouble with her teacher and having to redo it over the weekend or else she fails. Budge comes over to Creepy's house after school and they find no one home. Looks like Creepy got what she wished for. Over the course of the episode, Budge comes up with darker and darker scenarios as to why everyone in the house went missing. Even making Creepy think that they got sucked up by a vacuum by a door-to-door -door salesman. They check the whole house and end up finding everyone in the attic. Turns out the teacher called the parents about the homework, so they all banded together to cough up the homework, literally, so Creepy wouldn't fail. That's so sweet. We get this episode. In 
episode 15, the bug collector returns. He's acquired some sort of prehistoric monster bug. Creepy, of course, breaks out the bug, but realizes rather quickly he is not accustomed to the modern world. He terrorizes the town, and even when she takes him home, her family agrees he's a bit too much. The bug collector figured out that the monster bug was at Creepy's house, so he plans to steal him back. He also realizes that the mom is there too, so might as well steal her as well. The monster bug actually ends up saving the mom from being taken by the bug collector, and he flies off with him into the moonlight. This man can't catch a break, but maybe stop being so mean to bugs then. The next episode I really enjoyed because it's very Nat and Polly centered. They're in a lot of episodes, but this felt like their episode. Nat falls into a giant bottle of hyper growth plant food in the science lab and basically turns into a human sized Nat. Creepy is terrified of what the other students are going to think, but he actually becomes super popular and is having the time of his life as a bad boy middle school student. Sponge <laughs> makes an antidote for him and all is back to normal. That is until Polly falls into the same bottle and grows as big as the school. But it doesn't matter because it's the end of the episode. We're back to some wholesome family fun time with father and student bowling night. Creepy doesn't tell her dad about this event because one, she knows he's not human and two, he wouldn't be capable of participating. Budge offers to have Creepy tag along with him and his dad so she can still have fun. Budge is a real one. I love him so much. She still ends up feeling like the third wheel though because everyone is busy with their parents. The principal actually does something really nice and volunteers to be her parent for the night. We're just going to overlook the psychoanalyzing part of it. Her and the principal's bowling balls end up all over the place. But hey, they're winning. Creepy figures out her dad is hiding in the bowling ball and controlling them so they can win. Creepy doesn't want to win that way, but is happy her dad showed up regardless and says she just wants him to watch. Apparently, the bowling alley that was space themed was actually just a giant spaceship the entire time and is being lifted off into space by an alien bug. Everyone escapes except for Chris Ellis's dad who is hellbent on winning. He does win the trophy, but he also gets taken off into space. But of course it doesn't matter because it's the end of the episode. I wish I got abducted forever. Skipping all the way to episode 21, the goth kids are back. They lost a bagpipe player in their band, don't ask questions, and need a replacement. For some reason, Chris Ellis volunteers creepy, but she does go along with it. Apparently everyone thinks the bagpipes are haunted, but Creepy finds out that there's just a bunch of woodworms living inside the bagpipes, and they only want a real bagpipe player to play it. They decide to help Creepy learn, and she gets fully into it. She commits. She starts playing 24-7, wearing Scottish clothing, and talking with a Scottish accent. The whole time Chris Alice thinks she's possessed. They have the concert, and they do an amazing job. Creepy leaves the concert hall right after the concert, and Chris Alice decides to follow her. She catches Creepy talking to the bagpipes, and it tells her that she's just talking to the bugs. That's when Creepy tells her her secret that she was raised by bugs. The lore is luring. Chris Alice thinks she has absolutely lost her goddamn mind. She drags her straight to the principal and tells her everything that's been going on with Creepy. She gets to the haunted bagpipes, however, and immediately the principal is like, hey, eh. this causes Chris Alice to look like the crazy person. The principal escorts Chris Alice to her office to evaluate her. We've come to possibly my favorite episode of the entire show. Episode 22. Tarantula Boy's back. Yay. And better than ever. He has his own movie coming up and everyone is hyped. Chris Alice blabs to the school that Creepy went on a date with him and now everyone wants her attention because they want to know what he's like in real life. But she doesn't really want to talk about it. She does, however, get a personal invitation to watch the premiere of the movie from Skipper. Guess who also makes their third and final return? The Bug Collector. The movie goes well. It ends with everyone screaming out of the place, but Skipper and Creepy go on another date after the movie. <laughs> And they go ice skating and get ice cream, all while the bug collector is trying to hunt them down and epically failing. After a while, he just decides to confront them and try to catch Tarantula Boy. Skipper makes this crazy scream that calls for his mother, and we get to see his tarantula mom in action. She quickly wraps him up in a web, and he's pretty much done for. Creepy is now so much more into Skipper after finding out that his mom is a tarantula. <laughs> Creepy takes him and his mom back to her house to introduce them to her parents. Turns out Skipper's mom and Creepy's mom are lifelong friends. The episode ends with them holding hands. Unfortunately, he doesn't come back anymore, but man, that was such a good episode. I would have loved to see a whole just 23 minute episode of that. Moving on to episode 24, aka the Creepy Lore episode. We really don't find out much more about Creepy's past, but we get some glimpses. We already know Creepy was dropped off as a baby. The person actually left a note saying to take care of my baby, but left it unsigned. The bugs raise her as their own, but as she gets older, she figures out she's kind of different. Why doesn't she grow wings or antennas or be able to spin a web? Later on, she would see a bunch of kids playing at a park. This is also where we find out that Chris, Alice, and Budge have been friends since they were really little. Her parents decide to prepare her to go to human school 
with other kids. She's pretty smart academically, but when she enters school, she really struggles to fit in socially. She meets Chris Alice because she's part of the welcoming committee and later bumps straight in to Budge, literally. And she thinks he's scary at first because he's a bigger guy until Chris Alice introduced them. And then they were friends forever. Well, this episode was really cute. I wish they would have expanded more on her path. I wanna know who her bio parents are. On to the last episode. It's Halloween night. Creepy and Budge are leaving to go trick-or-treating and they realize Aunt Rose has gone missing. You know, the giant spider whose diet consists of whole raw steaks. They spend basically the entire episode looking for her. Meanwhile, Polly and Nat decide to do their own trick-or-treating. Basically, they just terrorize Creepy's teacher for candy the whole episode. Chris Atlas bumps into someone who is really good and scaring people into getting candy. And they have a very super realistic spider costume. It's Aunt Rose. I kid you not, it ends with Chris Alice and Aunt Rose trick-or-treating throughout the neighborhood and counting all the candy at Chris Alice's house. That is literally it. The end. Creepy, since the game is true story, fake story, I thought your story is totally fake. Yeah, cause if there was really a girl with bug parents, wouldn't she like have her own television show? I was super confused at how this Halloween episode was the last episode. It doesn't feel like the end of a season. It would make much more sense for Creepy's backstory to be the end. I did some digging and found out that the Halloween episode was actually not the last episode, but a previous episode was. But it still didn't make sense because it was just a normal wacky adventure type episode. It seems like they weren't planning on the show ending, but it did and they didn't have time to do an ending. Regardless, I really enjoyed this. It was quirky and a really fun watch. It was a lot more complex than I thought it was going to be. It covered family dynamic, friendship problems, and just everyday preteen issues. I also learned a lot of things too. After the end of the episode, Creepy gives you a real life fact about the bug featured in each episode. I learned that only female mosquitoes suck blood and male mosquitoes are harmless. I also like that a lot of the titles for the episodes were based on movies and TV shows. Miami Lice, Are You Afraid of the Moss, Creepy in the Candy Factory. <laughs> and that is all I have on Growing Up Creepy. Like I mentioned below, if you guys want to watch this yourself, it is here on YouTube. But yeah, what did you guys think? Did you already know about Growing Up Creepy? Is this the first time you're hearing about this show? This was a fun one for me. I really enjoyed this. But yeah, if you want to check out my other media analysis, videos. I will leave a playlist down below and in the cards. But yeah, if you guys like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. I post new videos out every week, so don't forget to hit the notification bell so you never miss another upload from me. And I will see you guys in my next one. Bye!